Good evening. Welcome to the January 26, 2021 regular selectors meeting. Is um, I'll call the roll. Is it looks like we have all selectmen present. We have the town manager, the town clerk, the town planner, and we have our new recreation director in the waiting room waiting for us. So um, please stand with me and salute the flag. To the, to the flag, flag. To the United, United, United States, States of America, America. to the Republic one nation. for which it stands, one nation, one nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, justice for all. all. I like how the, there we go. the, the, the delay <laughs> there. there. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. Welcome. Is, um, <clears throat> is uh, we have our approval of uh, January 12th minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. And Ken? Yes. Myself is a yes. Thank you, everybody. Um, our first public comment. We have no public comment that I know of. Is I haven't been given any emails or anything. We have no public hearings tonight. Is uh, anything from the Envision Berwick, James, or not? Uh, we have Jeremy. That's going to be in in a little bit for his appointment um i'll let him uh talk about what we got going on there's a ton of volunteer interest good um it's some of the largest interests i've seen and actually here's here's jeremy right here i've actually oh. sprung the sprung this on him as a as a report here he is yeah. so jeremy jeremy's um really embraced his role, uh, kind of taking the reins with as Envision Berwick chair, um, he's asked a ton of good questions, and um, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool to see what he does with with Envision Berwick, and um, I'm gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun being the staff to that committee. All right, we'll hear from Jeremy during our appointments segment. There's, uh, we have no department reports tonight. Um, and that will get us right into the appointments. Is uh, first on the appointments is we have the planning board. We have two. Well, first, first we have Jerry Graybill, who is an alternate, and uh, he wants to move up to a regular position. And then we'll have two alternate openings and one interim regular opening, and uh, we'll explain that first. So. Um, is why don't we go with uh moving jerry up to the uh full membership first is uh <clears throat> is jerry with us he's not he's not nope. here yeah I, I don't no know. is um he he recently became involved in the uh planning board is that i believe at james prodding <laughs> is uh is uh he he was uh attended several of the meetings in the this past year you know with uh, concerns about some of the uh, things that were going on, and uh, he offered to step up. Is uh, he's been an alternate for a few months, um, but is um, <clears throat> is we have the opening, and as our regular uh, practices, is an alternate would be moved into the regular position. So, do we have a motion to move Jerry Graybill from a alternate to a regular member of the Berwick Planning Board? With a term so to expire December 31st of 2023. So moved. A motion, second. A second. Um, any discussion? No. And if not, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. That's right, five zero.
All right. So then that leaves us, we have an interim spot to fill and two alternate spots to fill. And um, the interim position would be for um, filling in for um, is uh, Dave. He's, uh, he uh, has been injured and not able to uh, fulfill his term right now. Is um, he had a, a pretty serious accident at home, I guess, and uh, he's on the slow recovery. So as of now, he is not going to be able to fulfill that position. We have three members, three volunteers that asked to be on the planning board. Is we have Amber Fecto, Allison Hurley, and Philip Roy. Um, is what I think we should probably do is go down through and let them all introduce themselves. Is the interim position would be for a position that expires on December 31st, 2023. And the two alternates, well, I guess all three of them would be on December 31st. So um, is, I understand Amber was the first to volunteer, James? Yep, she was the uh, first one, yep. All right, Amber, is, uh, would you like to uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, why you would like to be on the planning board? Um, so I'm a resident of Berwick, I have been for about 20 years now. Um, I have one daughter that's in the school system and then another that will be in the fall. And uh, I've just been looking for a way to get involved with the town and kind of um, help out as much as I can. Um, I do have a full-time job. I work at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard, but I'm currently teleworking and just looking for something else as well. Um, do any of the board members have questions for Amber? Is, so far. is um is, is i'll just i have a couple of questions amber is, is um is first first is uh just to get everybody straight your name is amber amber fecto are you related to nicole at all i'm not related to nicole <laughs> yeah. is, i remember i remember asking nicole several years back if she had any relatives in the area and, and she said no so i was kind of surprised to see your last name pop up like that but um <laughs> is um I'll, I'll ask you is is it would it matter to you whether it was an interim full position or uh alternate position it doesn't matter to me i'm happy to help in any capacity that's needed all right um if there are no further questions of amber as i'll go to allison how are you hello how are you <laughs> not bad if just give us a little bit of your background and what what's you interested in. Um, I'm new to Berwick. I've been here for about a year. Sorry. Yep. All right. Oh, Allison, are you still there? Can you guys still hear me? Okay. 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 So um, I've been a resident for about a year and I'm actually going to be a business owner at the edge. Um, we're opening a family butchery there when they open. Um, because of that, obviously, I'm super interested in, you know, transparency regarding every development we make to Berwick with our community. Um, I want to be transparent and open and I know it's going to benefit everybody what we're doing. That's the goal. Um, and my goal is to really bridge as much as I can between, you know, the citizens of Berwick and what's going on in the town. Um, I do run one of the mom Facebook pages. So I have about a few hundred um, connections with the mothers in Berwick um, that are always telling me what they're looking for. Yes. <laughs> And, um, and what they're interested in for the town. Um, I'm an agent with Keller Williams. So I do have, you know, enough free time to juggle this. Um, and I'm definitely interested in, in the position to stay on. Um, I would love to see another lady up on that planning board. <laughs> um, is I'll ask you the same as I asked uh, Amber is, um, 
would it matter to you whether you were an interim, a full-time interim member or a volunteer, I mean, an alternate? Um, I mean, I'd love to be full-time. Like I said, I would love to see another woman up on the planning board. You know, I think that's great for it to be a, a permanent thing. So yeah, I would love to be full-time. Do any of the other uh, selectmen have a question for Allison? If not, I'll go to Phil. Thank you. Hey, Phil, how are you? I'm well, how about yourself? Not too bad. Is, uh, fill us in a little bit about your background and why you'd like to be on the planet. I, uh, I hail originally from uh, Auburn, Maine. I was born and raised up there. Uh, left kicking and screaming at 18 to join the Coast Guard, traveled around the world uh, for 24 years, uh, had a, a great time serving uh, my country uh, as a diver and a medic. Uh, my last tour of duty brought me up to uh, Cape Cod and closer to home, closest I had had the opportunity to be at a home in 20 some odd years. And uh, <clears throat> when I retired, I moved back up here to the uh, Berwick area, took a job at the shipyard, uh, continuing to do a job that I love and uh, really settled into the town of Berwick. I've gotten to know a lot of people and, and really enjoy the, the small town atmosphere that Berwick has to offer. And I've always had a strong sense of service and, and uh, would like to give back to the community that, that gives my family and I so much and uh, would be happy to serve in any capacity that uh, is available. Anybody have questions for Phil? No. Is um, so. Is uh, we have one interim and two alternates. Is uh, anybody have a suggestion on how to split it up? Um, sorry, just uh, off my top of my head, I think that. Um, just based on the 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 order in which they volunteered and also just gauging general interest i think that amber should be the um interim member and allison and phil should be the in um should be the um alternate members and uh proceed from there because and they and the alternate members do become full-time members later if once once a seat opens up they they promote up it's more just like a stepping stone you still go to all the meetings and i was an interim member uh, an alternate member and it was a lot of fun so that would be my suggestion any other comments from the board tom i do have a question you said the terms would expire december 31st of 23 2023. Uh, 2023. Uh, the two alternates are listed for a three-year term. So does that match? Um, it, no, it would be 24. Patty, could you answer that? Yeah, if I can unmute. Um, yeah, so it's December 2020 for three years. So... 2020 to okay. 21 to 22 to 23. Okay, so they're picking so it up. It would be December 2023. They're picking up from the end of December, from December yes. last year. Okay. Yes. Not, not from the date of appointment. It's no. From the term. No. Okay. So thanks for making it clear. You're welcome. The, the tricky part is we just don't know when or if Dave is coming, coming back to the board. He's more than welcome obviously to come back to the board we want him back but there's no rush for him so it's just an in, indefinite period where um the interim is filling a regular voting member spot typically there's um an alternate member is typically one at least one alternate member is voting per meeting um sometimes there's four regular members that means one one alternate becomes a voting member um so phil i mean i think you're the closest to dave right i mean it might be the most appropriate that you you fill in for Dave. And then, I mean, Dave might, I mean, he's been on the planning board for nine years. So at some point he's earned his planning board retirement, but we're not, you know, we're not kicking him off by any means. So I just throw that out there. I don't know what you guys think about that. Sorry, can I just, I just have one question. 
Yep. Um, if you don't mind, in what ways, I'm just confused. In what way do you mean he's the most similar to who he's filling in for? No, he's the most familiar with, with Dave, personally. Is, um, um, uh, uh, yeah, so, so Amber and Allison uh, and Phil, I know you've all uh, chosen to volunteer, and I'm certainly appreciative of that. I'm sure as every other member of the board is as well. Um, Amber and Allison, you both have mentioned, I believe that you're going to serve in the um, interim position. Is there any, any battle between who feels that they should be more qualified to serve in that position? And I'll throw you out there as well, Phil. I mean, honestly, for me, just because we are opening that market this year, it's incredibly important to me how that's handled with the town. Um, not only am I a resident of um, Berwick, so it impacts me double fold how businesses, you know, emerge in our in our new village. Um, but it's also important, like how it's handled with the community. So, I mean, I've been a manager for years. Um, I'm a mom myself in the town and and I have a lot of connections to the town with that, that page that we're always talking on. Um, so I don't know. I know like it was a first come first serve and I would love to serve in any way that I can. Um, but I just found out about this position. Um, and the second I did, you'll, you'll hear how like tenacious I was about trying to get it. Um, I'm definitely not shy about saying that I do want to be in the permanent spot. <laughs> Where's your, where's your, where are you opening the market, Allison? At, at the edge, the new development, the edge. What, a, a, a small grocery store market? Yeah, we're doing a butchery and market. Oh, Maybe great, minute. great. Yeah, going to be walking distance from my house, so. Good, that's good. Yeah. Allison, to your point, the, um, the, 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 the only difference here is that the interim member will be full-time voting member until until and unless Dave returns. And when he returns, the interim rem member would be stepping down from that position. And the alternate members would be full-time members f f serving a, their own full term, but they would not be regular voting members unless Open. other members of the board were not present. But even as an alternate member, you still have full input in the board, but just depending on the meeting and who shows up and who's available, you may or may not be voting on specific issues. Okay, well, yeah, I totally understand, but you know, they're asking, so I'm answering. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just making, I just wanna make sure that we're, we're clear. I understand there is, it is confusing in term and alternate and it's a whole new situation, but but the, the real only difference here is that in term is quasi temporary uh, assuming that Dave come back. If Dave does not come back, then the interim member would fulfill his term and then have to be reappointed in three years. So, but if he comes back in six months, then that's when that interim position would end. Okay. And the alternate position is a full three-year term. Okay, I hear you saying. I, this is Phil. I just wanted to say, uh, you know, I'm happy to fill any role um, that's available. Uh, for me, it's it's not about uh, it's not about me. It's about the board. It's about serving the local community. Um, I, you know, I bring a lot to the fight. Uh, you know, as a program manager for the entire Coast Guard dive program for the uh, towards the end of my career, um, I've I've worked extensively in and out of the federal government. Uh, I don't have a lot of local government experience, but uh, however you guys are willing to exploit my talent, I'm. Uh, I'm willing to serve and uh, whatever role you decide uh, is a good fit, I'm willing to fulfill that role. So I'm, I don't have hard feelings one way or the other. It, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just, I'll just uh, throw something in here. Um, just the way that uh, Patty gave me the paperwork is the way it came out is, is, uh, is the way we have it listed out is, is uh, Allison would be listed as the interim member and then Amber and Phil would be alternate members. Is there any problem with that? Does anybody have any problem with that? That's perfectly fine with me. I'm okay with either one. So, is uh, all right. 
is um, I'm looking for a motion to appoint Allison as an interim member with a term to expire December 31st in 2023. Do we have a motion? So moved. Or when Dave Andreessen returns, right? Right. Yes. yes. Just want to make sure that's clear and on the record. All right. We have a motion. We have a second. Noah, did you second that? Second. All right. Any further discussion? No. Nope. As I'll go through the roll, is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Congratulations, Allison. Thank All right, you. now we need a motion to appoint Amber Fecto as an alternate member to the planning board term to expire December 31st, 2023. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. With no further discussion, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we need a motion for Philip Roy to be appointed as an alternate member of the planning board with a term to expire December 31st, 2023. So moved. So moved. Second. A motion in a second. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Congratulations, you three, and thank you for stepping forward. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you for the very opportunity. Much. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Allison, Noah? can I ask you one more question? Yep. <laughs> how how are the how are the people that uh, own the edge to deal with? Oh my uh, gosh, phenomenal. I love them. <laughs> So they were really, really helpful for you to get work at something oh, yeah. out, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. They are Good. Like, super supportive of local business owners and mom and pop shops. They gave us a chance, like, right off the bat when we gave them our business plan. And I really, really like that company. I like that group a lot. Good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. I'll be in touch, guys. See you, James. Right. So that leaves us with... Uh, an appointment to the Recreation Commission is Michelle Lino. Is she on? She was in and out of the waiting room. I think she probably thought she wasn't going to get let in. Yeah, she just emailed me that she could get no answer. So she said she'd stop by tomorrow. Um, Angela, I don't know if you've spoken to her in person and you could maybe fill in the board. No, I. the only thing that I got was an email from her. Okay. Um, in regards to her wanting to um, step in. She did attend our meeting, um, our rec commission meeting last week um, and just briefly put in um, pretty much the same thing that she put in her email that she wants to um, come in and help out and surely wants to help with um, online gaming to see if we can get that into play. Um, and I've already contacted a company today and talk to somebody about that. So hopefully um, she can, if she does come on board, that that will be something that she can help kind of navigate. Is Angela, is um, how many how many openings are there on the Recreation Commission? There's two, right, Patty? I believe so. Two full regular full. memberships, and then you can have an alternate or two also, correct? So. So you have you have several positions open. Yes, we do. Um, you know, typically typically we have the people come in and introduce themselves. Um, is I know that there's a been, you know, we, we'll be hearing later on from Angela a little bit more about the recreation uh, department. Um, I know that there's a, a lot of new things being talked about as. <clears throat> I don't know, do, do you guys really, are you going to insist on having Michelle come in or do you want to, uh, you know, throw the dice and appoint her and see what she's like? Yeah, see do what she's like. Any other people? She's volunteering, that's fine. Yeah. 
Is, um, as far as I know, no, there are no nobody else has volunteered yet. So, is, um, is I, I don't I don't have a problem. You know, if she's already attended a meeting and and had some input, it shows that she's interested and in, in, sure. uh, willing to put herself out there. Is right. um, is I'll make I'll make a motion to appoint Michelle Lino Lino. I don't know exactly how to pronounce it as a um, member of the Berwick Recreation Commission for a term to expire on December 31st, 2023. Do I have a second? No second. second. Any further discussion? No. If not, I'll go through the roll. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. And next we have Jeremy Caston as a full member of the Berwick and Vision Committee with a term to expire December 31st, 2022. Is uh let Jeremy in and let him talk. Yes. Hey Jeremy, how you doing? Hi everybody. Is, uh, Just to give you a is this the time that I give a brief introduction to myself? Yep. Go For those right who don't know me, I, uh, I grew up in Baltimore, uh, went to first moved to New England for college, uh, didn't love Boston, but fell in love with Maine. And uh, uh, since I was a small child, had a, a dream of making movies, pursued that on the West Coast in, in Los Angeles. Um, made some movies and that was that was amazing but also um not as it turned out a great way to support a family uh, <laughs> and uh and so i found myself working in reality tv which i do not like at all and um at the same time developed an interest in food systems and uh started caring about how I was going to feed those children and worrying about, um, you know, animals treated cruelly in CAFOs and horrible situations that, uh, you know, don't let them be animals. And so um, met my wife and, and, and as we started our family, we're like, we can get the hell out of here. I want my kids to climb trees and grow up around chickens and, uh, I don't want to sit at a computer for 14 hours anymore, a day, six days a week. So um, started looking around and found a school in uh, Harpswell, Maine, which is really in a dude's house who is like a amazing, charismatic, old timer Mainer who knows how to do everything himself. And, you know, I knew how to use a computer and uh, in the nine months we lived with him with my one-year-old and three-year-old, two cats and wife. I learned how to, you know, split wood and slaughter chickens and and uh, be normal. And uh, and we fell in love with Berwick when we started looking around and found, um, I mean, basically the, the dream farm for us was this insane property uh, that abuts your, your property, Mark. Uh, uh, with a, uh, uh, an amazing and um, a very eccentric woman who had this property for, for about 25 years and, and fell in love with it and fell in love with Berwick in, in every way. It was, we, we could have landed anywhere. I mean, we looked at New Orleans and we looked at Thailand and we decided on Berwick and, uh, and we've never looked back. We think that, that that every day is um, could not be more perfect. Our children are having, even in the pandemic, our children are having an incredible experience and a great experience here. They're out in the woods making fires and climbing trees and you know getting eggs from the chickens and milking goats and what children are supposed to do. So that's the kind of uh, broad sweeping perspective. Um, uh, additionally, I was uh, 
I lived in downtown Los Angeles as that became gentrified and um, it had basically sat uh, encased in amber since uh, World War II. And then uh, when the hipsters moved in, in the aughts, um, there was a lot of work to be done to both protect the people who had been there for a very long time, which was, you know, um, a population of people who were going to get booted because of gentrification and also uh, balancing that with um, gentrification, right? Money and, and all of that. And, and um, it gave me a unique perspective being part of that and, and seeing a, a, a place change very rapidly in some ways for, for good and in some ways not at all. Um, but, but I was vocal about it because I was young and, and didn't know better. And now um, I'm seeing Berwick potentially change for, for good. And, uh, and I wanna be part of that good. I wanna see it uh, retain what, uh, what, what brought us here. We, we love so much of its um, character that is endemic to it. We also don't wanna see it uh, as, as the suburbs come in and, and people escape Boston and New York for, uh, for uh, uh, places where they can work remotely. We don't wanna see that character change. We, we wanna retain that. So all of that um, interests me deeply. And um, I have a background in marketing I work for the movie studios marketing their movies. And, and I hope I am able to bring some of that experience to bear in, um, in protecting the things that we love about Berwick. I don't know if I said that well, but, but that's <laughs> the, the big picture summation. I mean, what you're doing, I mean, what Jeremy and I have been working on is fairly, I mean, comprehensive. It's the marketing, it's protecting the farmland, it's developing our downtown, it's branding, it's all that in the one. And I think it's gonna be a blast just working with Jeremy, working with the broader community, our new planning board members, the select board, and a town administration to make just all the cool stuff we've been we've been doing to, to keep it going. Angela too. Oh. The great thing is that that um, I'm enthusiastic and have a lot of energy. I don't always um, uh, 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 you know, I don't have the, 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 the best working knowledge of, of local government and, and, and small town, uh, government, but, but that's all stuff I'm, I'm excited to, um, endeavor to learn and, um, and, and work hard at. The board have any questions of Jeremy? I have one. Uh, how old are you? <laughs> you can't ask that question. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just curious because it sounds like you have the experience of someone who might be 50, but the energy of someone who might be 21. So I'm just curious. I'm just curious. I'll be 50 in March, but um, uh, my my uh, my my uh, boy, I wish I had a good answer. There's so many good jokes. Like it's <laughs> one uh, I'm, I'll be 50. Uh -huh. I, I have uh, my my superpower is that that um, I'm not that smart, but I I'm enthusiastic and have a lot of energy. You <laughs> seem like the most interesting man in the world right now. So that's so <laughs> kind of, you know. uh, just a, uh, I I love the enthusiasm. I think the experience you talked about is is great and very insightful, and seems like you certainly have a general idea of what we're trying to accomplish, which is to improve the downtown, but keep the character of Berwick intact. And I certainly would have, I think you would be a very big uh, benefit to the team, to bring a fresh perspective to it. Thanks. Is that a motion to, to nominate? Absolutely. I'll second it. You have a second. Um, any other questions for Jeremy? I just have to, I'll, I'll put this in. I've, I've worked with Jeremy a little bit with the Envision Committee over the last couple of years. And um, he, he does bring a real enthusiasm to the table. Is, um, he's produced several you know, videos for Berwick, you know, you know, different aspects of Berwick. I, I can't remember what the names of them were. Berwick stories. Berwick stories, how, yeah, of course. Uh, <laughs> is, um, is, um, but, um, he, he does. He brings a lot of enthusiasm and I'm really appreciative of him, you know, wanting to continue this. So 
is, uh, if there's nothing else, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. Congratulations, Jeremy. Thanks, guys. I'm very excited. Thank we you. We are too. Coming. Thank you. All right. Moving on. I'm going to sign uh, off. Is, is, uh, we have nothing under unfinished business. Is a uh, town manager report. I'm still chasing Mr. Cahaya and his attorney to get the Blue Sort building squared away. Um, and I pushed a little harder today. We may end up doing something that we had in the contract, original contract, where we could push the closing ourselves. And um, so I hope I don't have to do that. I'd just like to get it over with because there's a lot of interest in that building. And uh, hopefully that happens soon. Um, hey, Steve, I think it'd be a great idea if you moved ahead with that. You know, we put up with his crap for many years, and I think it's time to move on. Okay. Yeah. Wash our hands of it. Personal I'll opinion. Talk, I'll talk to the attorneys tomorrow. Um, Please. And uh, get it get it moving. Um, we've finished up the credit enhancement agreement. We had a lot of back and forth on some things, language, but uh, it's pretty well intact. Your next meeting, there'll be a public hearing for that and a vote to uh, a, a, agree to the public uh, credit enhancement agreement. I think uh, there'll be a Public hearing, we'll talk a little bit about it, but it's a really uh, in good proposal to keep incentive for helping uh, the edge and uh, reinvesting uh, money back into the property and giving us uh, money to do projects in uh, the downtown village, which James and I are already talking how we're gonna spend the money. So uh, I look forward to it. Um, the bridge designs on uh, Diamond Hill are pretty well completed. I talked with the engineers today. Uh, they had a lot of questions. Um, and my comments to them is that we will not be doing anything this coming fiscal year because of the economics of it. Um, I have to check with the DOT if they have their 50% match. Uh, but I will we'll, uh, we'll hopefully be looking at 20, uh, 2022 and 2023 fiscal year to uh, do that project. Um, and it will be a little bit expensive, but uh, needs to be done before it collapses. Um, we also today, James and I got copies of the uh, engineering plans uh, for the Sawmill Hill and Route 9 intersection. And we'll be talking to them in a couple of weeks uh, to give us our thought, give them our thoughts on it. And, um, and hopefully, um, some of that is being done with CATS money and, uh, and states paying some funds on that. So um, otherwise everybody's been working on the budget and I think I've finished up most of it today. Um, the nice thing is I heard from uh, Paul McKinley, uh, McKenna, that he, our assessor, and he informed me that as of uh, last week, we had grown approximately 8 million in valuation, which is really amazing. Uh, but also it helps offset the taxes and maybe he thinks we may have upwards of uh, two to three more million by April 1st. So that will help uh, with the tax rate, but the budget, um, I'll be talking to department heads about my recommendations and uh, you'll have your first introduction to the budget uh, at your next meeting and I'll get you your budget books uh, by the first of the week, next week. So if you have any questions, I've got a summary of a report with it and be a lot of information. It's uh, looks pretty good, I think. But Are we getting physical books or are we getting them by email? Um, we usually give them out by books, by notebooks. I think uh, there's quite a bit of documents in it. You'd probably be better off to just come and pick them up when they're ready. And uh, Lisa Vargas will let you know, or Lisa Hustis, they put them together in the finance office. Um, but, uh, there'll be good discussions. Um, and also, I just want to say uh, Sharon Kelly, our librarian, is uh, back at work on a part-time basis. She caught COVID, and, uh, but she uh, got through it, thank goodness, and she's 
healthy and we're all excited about that. So that's all I have. Any questions? Any questions of Steve? <clears throat> if not, we'll move on. Um, I had no communications is I'll go to approval of warrants. <clears throat> We have a payroll warrant number 44 for January 21st, 2021, by the amount of $69,608.82. We have a payroll warrant 45 for January 21st, 2021, for the amount of $1,059.75. We have a payroll warrant. 46 for January 28th, 2021, for the amount of $69,850.22. And we have an account payable warrant, 47 for January 26th, 2021, for the amount of $142,257.96. As I'll make a motion to pay the bills, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? If not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Ed, are you there? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is yes. All right. Is uh goes to new business and in the introduction of Angela O'Connor as a new recreation director. I can kind of say something before she talks. I just want the public to know that when we advertised this position, we had over 60 applicants, 60 people looking for that job. Some of them didn't have the qualifications, but quite a few did. Um, and we were able to offer it to Angela and the staff and I are extremely excited to have her on board. She comes with a great uh, background, a lot of experience, and she's excited by all this energy that she finds in Berwick. So on that note, I'll hand it back to Tom. But is uh, Angela, how are you doing? Good. Thank you, Steve. You're welcome. Is, um, um, is, um, if you would, give us a little bit of your background. My background is um, I grew up actually in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. I came up here to go to school at USM, ended up in Denver to start my park and recreation um, experience um, right after college and ended up coming back to Maine to work in Kennebunkport. And then after being in Kennebunkport for 15 plus years, I ended up in Needham, Massachusetts, where I was just recently there for the last two and a half years as the assistant director and helping open up a brand new recreation facility that housed two outdoor swimming pools and a recreation complex. Um, the experience down there was fantastic. Um, I've always had a passion for parks and recreation. Um, I've been in it all my life. I started working at the Boys and Girls Club in Pittsfield, um, ended up working at the Boys and Club in Portland while I was in college. Um, actually haven't really ventured outside of that because um, it's just a big passion of mine. One of my biggest excitements for being here in Berwick is the energy that I am able to be around. James has been awesome to work with. Um, Jeremy was another person that I met last week um, who is just full of energy as you guys could tell. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the growth and the development of this department as well as the entire town. Um, does anybody on the board have any questions of Angela? Nope. Steve mentioned that there was that you had some uh, some new ideas for the department, <laughs> new things. I would love to hear about them, especially you have mentioned something about uh, like uh, online video games as part of your recreation department. Yeah, um, I actually just talked to a company today. It's called GG Gaming. Um, there's actually a main league that's being housed right now um, with other recreation departments, Saco, Wells, York, um, just to name a few. Um, I'm looking forward to possibly starting that up. Um, registrations will hopefully go out 
um, within the next month or so. Um, it doesn't start up until April because the first session is already done and they started, I think, last week. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. It's something that I really am not really familiar with, but this platform and this company pretty much is a vendor. So they take, they help you, they set it all up and you just get the kids and it's for age, actually it's for ages eight to adult. So adults can play as well and they have different age brackets. Um, and if you don't have enough people in the registrations, they don't cancel it. They just add you to another team that's throughout Maine. So it's it's pretty wow. interesting. Yes. And I'd like to um, definitely bring in in-person programming back, um, COVID style. <laughs> I hate to even say that, but it's what you have to do. Um, I'm lucky enough to be able to have already experienced that down in Needham. Um, we were able to open both our our outdoor pools and our programs this past summer um, with a solid COVID plan in place. And I'm proud to say that we didn't have COVID at all that came through our summer programs or at our facility um, because we were able to make sure that we followed the guidelines that we needed to follow. So I'm looking forward to being able to make a makeshift and modified summer program this summer. Sounds great. And then James and I have also been dabbling in with um, looking at a master plan for our fields too. Um, and we're really excited about that. Um, expanding some property and developing more on our athletic fields at Memorial Field. James, I don't know if you wanna yeah, talk a little bit more about that. It's been a project that's been um, toward the top of what I would call my, my priority list for Envision Berwick or Rec Master Plan. Um, and it's just, especially the past six to eight months, trying to look at uh, the right consulting firm. And um, there's landscape architects, there's, there's consultants, there's engineers, but the group that Angela found is just the uh, the perfect match. They do everything between um, existing conditions plans. They'll look at what our assets are, what our deficiencies are. They'll come up with a maintenance plan, um, capital improvements plan, and and some concepts. So I think it's going to be really going to be a really exciting project to um, get the most out of Memorial Field. Yeah, it's been really exciting to look at that because it's such a beautiful piece of land. And it's such a huge asset to our town and we want to make sure that we're keeping that up to par and making sure that we don't have to dump a lot of money into it in just one year but at least if we can maintain it and make sure that you know we're putting the money away for every year to to make sure that the whole community can use it and with the foot traffic that's going to be involved with the new um, building and the village coming into place there's going to be a lot more foot traffic coming and through those through the parks and we really need to think about how we're going to maintain that as well any other questions for angela any comments no thank you thank you for taking the position angela you sound like uh you have a broad and diverse background with uh some excellent experience which is really going to enhance uh, the rec program at Berwick. So we're certainly grateful to have you on board. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ed. If you guys have any ideas or any questions or just suggestions, recommendations, don't hesitate to contact me, email me. Um, I'm op my door is always open. As Mark knows, <laughs> he came to visit me. <laughs> so... All right. Thanks a lot, Angela. Yep, thank thank you. you. Safe trip home. Yep. Is, uh, we'll move on. Is, um, and actually, I probably should have done this before. Is um, We have a resignation letter from Natalie Gould from the Recreation Commission that 
It's with regret that I am writing to inform you that I have chosen to resign from the Recreation Commission effective immediately. After serving the town and this board for over nine years, I feel there are other places that I need to focus my attention. I feel it is time for someone else to fulfill these duties. I am proud of the programs, events, and recreational opportunities that the Recreation Commission has worked on over the years, and I have great hope that will be more successes in the future. Best regards, Natalie. Yeah, is uh, she's been there for nine years. She knew the background, that's for sure. Yeah. Is uh, is definitely going to you know miss the uh, the uh, past knowledge in that. So, okay. um, that brings us to we have a poll petition from CMP, uh, Coffin Lane, which is off from. Route four, just up the road from Mark's place. And it looks like it's a, the typical poll permit. So uh, I would move we accept the poll permit as it's presented. Do we have a second? Second. Second. We have a motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the Roll is Ed. Yes. Mark. Yes. Noah. Yes. Ken. Yes. And myself as a yes. All right. Let's see. All right. Proposed town hall hours. We have a change. If Patty, if you want to. Uh, Take the lead on this. Sure. So um, this would affect my office and uh, James's office. Um, what we're working right now, um, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, 8 to 4, Fridays, 8 to 1230, and Tuesdays, 8 to 6. We're finding that we don't have time to cash out in the customer service area. Um, that afternoon piece is so quick between um, when people get back from lunch and the four o'clock closing time. So we've encountered a lot of uh, comp time for the staff staying late with customers and everything. So my proposal is to open to the public eight to five Monday through Thursday. That gives staff um, an hour every day to cash out to do reports. Um, so we can have staff meetings, et cetera. It would be a total of nine hours a day that we're open to the public. We of course would be here for, you know, our 39 and a half minus lunch, half hours. So, and it would be Monday through, th through Thursday and closed on Friday. Um, the rest of the building has schedules where um, they're either working from home on Fridays or they've done their hours Monday through Thursday. Questions of Patty? Patty, just, just one. I mean, what, what kind of activity do you normally see on a Friday? It varies, Ed, um, depending on the time of year. Summer mm -hmm. might be a little busier, especially with discount tickets. But I think our hours have always been confusing because they're never consistent every day. And this may help the residents where it's eight to five Monday through Thursday. There's no like half days stuck in there. Um, yeah, it's, you know, we're open eight to 12.30 on Fridays right now. And it really varies week to week with the traffic flow. I, w I would imagine that probably a lot of your, your traffic is more towards the afternoon hours and people are getting off of work and things of that nature. Yes. I'm yeah, guessing. That's okay. why we have that rush at five minutes before mm -hmm. close that people are in here. And that causes a lot of um, overtime for my staff. So I have to work their schedule um, and send them home <laughs> early on another day. So and you feel you that, feel. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Having that hour at the end of the day 
will really help tremendously just you know to not have the customers in to take the time to cash out sometimes they're counting a large amount of money and we're still open to the public so this will be closed to the public when we do that um we've had times when residents are waiting for 20 minutes while we cash out so this will eliminate that also gives us time to meet as a staff it gives time for us to do our weekly reports without trying to juggle when the customers are here get you know a third of it done go help someone jump back to it about how much uh, comp time have you been averaging per week roughly it's been about a half an hour so what happens is friday we close at 12 30 we're here till 1 30 so they still have to cash out at 12 30 and most of the time i send them home at one that half hour early i in my opinion i, I personally don't have a problem with this i think this is it would probably be a win-win for the residents as well as uh, the staff working at the, the town hall. Uh, that's my opinion. So I'm, I'm not opposed to uh, accepting the, the proposal provided by Thank Patty. You. Thank you. Um, I, if the board agrees, I would like to put it into effect on February 22nd. That gives the two week notice to my union staff. It'd be nice to nice. have some sort of board in town a you know, sign that we can post the hours. Um, if I ever get a complaint, it's about, well, well they're not open all day Friday. Or the, you know, that people just go down there thinking we're open 24 right. seven. It'd just be nice to have a board down there. Where we can write it up, put it right up there. Yeah, I agree. That would be nice. I don't know if, it, if the electronic sign made it through the budget, Steve. We've talked about that for quite a bit since <laughs> I've been here. And it, it's not so much the signage, it's where to put the sign has been the, the difficult part. We can certainly budget for it. It's not cheap. No. Uh, yeah, we, why would we use a, just use one? We put letters in it. We change the sign ourselves with letters for now. I mean, for the time being, I can use the sign that we used to use to announce meetings. Right. But again, right. That's at the end of... <laughs> the town hall ramp. So if you're not going one way down Sullivan, you're not going to see it. Right. Yeah, I think, I think that's something we really, really need to hammer down. Again, we've been discussing this for years, yep. you know, and, and, and it's something that I think that will, will benefit every resident of this town. Uh, obviously, if we keep hearing communication, communication, the public doesn't know, and, and we're hearing that from the residents and, Everybody drives by the town hall. If we find a good spot for that sign, there's no reason why somebody doesn't know the hours of the town hall. They don't know that there's a there's a, a meeting or a, people are voting. I mean, obviously there's there's parking along that, that, that side of the street there. So when people are driving by, they're not paying attention to the little sign, the fold out sign, which is you know posted at the corner. So I think a, a good visible sign, which can convey information to the entire town as they drive by uh, is going to be invaluable, uh, not only for, for the residents, but for the town to be able to convey that information to them. Right. So right. we really need to put that on the, on the, on the agenda to hammer that down. Okay. Whether yeah. it be digital, I'm not a big fan of LED digital stuff. I, I really like, you know, something that's going to be in keeping with, uh, 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 or foreign base code or something that's going to be, you know, be uh, complementary uh, to the aesthetic of the town and, and not some big fancy digital uh, blaring sign. In my opinion. We had Neograph well, come out several years ago and give us some proposals and we just kind of couldn't decide the best spot for it. And at the time we just didn't want to spend the money. So, but I think we need to go back, like Ed said, and, and take a hard look at it. So what, what about those fellows that are those people that put the sign on the fire department and the uh, police department, Steve? They were out of Rochester. Yeah. They put the letters I up. I'll, I'll look into it. I know. I've seen some signage companies for some reason lately on the road. They did a nice job on the fire department, I thought, in the police department when they did it last yeah. fall. Yep, they did. 
Patty on the hours is um, is the only the only the only question I have is that I do get people who like having it open to six o'clock on some one night, you know, because a lot of people do get out of work at five. Mm -hmm. So is um, that that's the only thing I would see, you know, is I don't have a problem with trying this and seeing. You know, okay. is obviously we've changed it enough in the last year that uh, we're getting used to it. Is um, sooner or later we might get it to where everybody can agree. <laughs> that would be nice. And I agree, like we do see some traffic between five and six on most of the Tuesdays for open till six. Um, but again, there's a lot of things that people can complete online now and right. they don't need to come to town hall for everything. I know some people like to, but um, yep. yeah, I, I think it will be better if we're consistent with the eight to five Monday through right. Thursday, people will remember that and hopefully you won't get as many phone calls and emails about Friday hours because we, James and I know, you know, after we're closed at 12.30, that door is constantly being pulled. Oh, People yeah. see that we're open Friday and they don't look at the time we close and they just expect us to be open. So I think this will help with the Friday traffic where we're closed all day. Um, I agree, you know, five o'clock, we might be able to, you know, stay one night till six. Well, I don't have a problem with trying this. You know, okay. And seeing how it works out is, you know, it is the the one thing I do get a lot of calls on with people are vocal about is when they're displeased about the town hall being open. So I do get calls on that. I don't get oh, calls yeah. on a lot of things that I would expect to get calls on. <laughs> but so is um all right. If there's no further discussion, do we have a motion to accept the hours as proposed? Do we have a second? Second it. All right. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have no quick clean deeds. Good night, everybody. Uh, you know, wait, wait, Karen up. Is uh, is we're on to uh, abatements and supplements. Is it a Hi, little Karen. longer than we a little longer than we usual, Karen? That's no problem. Whoops, here I am. Whoops. Yep. There we go. Hi there. Good to see you here, everybody. Um, we just have a couple of abatements tonight and one tree growth penalty. Um, the first one is um, a property, 95 Wentworth Road. Um, this is a 97 acre parcel with a single family home and it's a big farmhouse with a barn. Um, and the current owner uh, purchased the property in September and he filed an abatement and I did an inspection and it was determined that the house had significant damage from a burst water pipe a burst pipe back in January. And when I went there in October, you know, he was, he had gutted the place and it was very evident that it, it had been uh, damaged and uh, there was some rot in the, in the dwelling and so forth. So the condition of the property was, was not assessed as it should have been as of April 1st. Um, the, again, the property owner of September, uh, bought the property in September uh, so therefore, we had to go to the property owner of, as of April 1st, who was Dale Boldick, and he has submitted to assessing a written consent for this abatement to go forward. Uh, he has consented for this abatement, um, which is important to have. Um, so the result is that the um, assessed value was reduced by 79700 from 491,400 to 411,700. Um, therefore, I'd recommend that an abatement be granted in the amount of $1,542.99. What was the selling price on the house? Selling price was uh, 400, 
even, I think it was, uh, 410. You know, so that brings up more in line with the selling price then. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. And uh, it's a, and we'll, we'll recoup that value in that um, the owner is uh, in the process of uh, rebuilding, you know, uh, remodeling the entire property. So either next year or the year after, the value will be right back up there, if not high, you know, higher or certainly back up to where it's um, operating. Right now, it's um, not even habitable. I would move we accept the abatement as presented. Second it. Motion and a second. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Jared, is that the is that the house on Wentworth Road with the gravel pit out back? There's a dirt road to the left of the house. Uh, go down the dirt road. I think it's to the right. There's the dirt roads. Yeah, it's to the left of the house. Yeah, it is to the left of the house. Yeah. Yeah, it goes out back to the gravel pit. Okay. It, it, yep. it was the Wentworth homestead. Yep. Ah. Okay, Karen, next. Okay, so the next um, abatement uh, is for the property located at 410 Portland Street. Uh, this is a nine acre mixed use property consisting of a single family dwelling and a commercial building that was 45% complete as of April 1st. Um, an inspection of the site was completed and an adjustment for the building features and outbuilding was made as a result. Um, we've it was also determined that the land uh, was over assessed as compared to other properties uh, in this neighborhood. So we made the corrections so that it is assessed like other properties um, in this neighborhood. And as a result of these changes, the assessed value was reduced by 85,600 from 431,800 to 346,200. Um, and therefore, it's recommended that an abatement be granted in the amount of one thousand six hundred and fifty-seven dollars and twenty-two cents. So moved. I'll second it. Any discussion? Yeah. If, if not, I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark. Yes. Noah. Yes. Ken. Yes. And myself is a yes. Okay, and then finally, we have a tree growth penalty um, to assess. Um, on January 19th, um, assessing received an email request from the principal owner, Les Bodwell. Uh, he's the principal owner for 193 Route 236 LLC. Uh, he requested that we remove all of the acreage currently classified as tree growth for the property. Um, and I called Les Bodwell and I confirmed his email request. And so I, as a result um, of that, the classification for 21.57 acres classified as tree growth will now be assessed in accordance to market value. Uh, and a tree growth penalty must be assessed uh, pursuant to the tree growth law. Uh, I included the tree growth penalty calculation details and how that's calculated. We simply looked at the difference between um, the uh, just value at the time of withdrawal minus the um, assessed value when it's in tree growth. That difference is then multiplied by 20% because the uh, property has been in tree growth for more than 20 years. And that amounts to the penalty of $8,780. That, that the parcel that's going into SOLA? Is it? Yes. 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 Now, do we do we get do we go back in there and assess that parcel that twenty one acres as a solar farm now? Yes, we will be going there. They're in the process of building that, and we'll be right. uh, assessing that. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Nope. Move to accept recommendation. Second it. No further discussion. I'll go through the roll. Is Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. 
And myself is a yes. Thank you, Karen. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. All right. Take care of that. Um, we have no other public comment. We have no executive session. Do you want to mention Lynn Shearer? Oh, go ahead. You want, you want go. To um, and, and then the other business, non-agenda items, is a couple different things. Um, is our assistant town clerk, Lynn Shera, has uh, put in her resignation. She is moving on. She's accepted a position as a city clerk someplace else, I believe. City clerk, yep. And uh, when will be her last day, Steve? Uh, February 3rd is her last day. So, is, um, so uh, you know, she's been with us for... What, eight years. Eight years now. Yeah. So is uh, you know she's been a been you know through thick and thin. She's been through some of the rough times and uh, through some of the good times with us. So is uh, we'll be going to be missing her. Yeah. A lot of years here. So. Yeah. So um, is one other item I want to bring up is um, I asked Lisa Vargas to get me some figures on uh, the street lights since we changed them to the LEDs and it. Seems like since we've changed over all the street lights, we're saving about two thousand dollars a month on average with our bills. And so if we average that out, it looks like probably in about three and three a years. half years. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, good. Pay that off and then you know, from then on that money will be savings for us. So is uh and you know, good deal. Hope, hopefully we can get more things like that going. Um any other Business anybody wants to bring up? Don't forget that we have a Spirit of America Award. We got to pick somebody All for right. it. Spirit yeah. of America Award, yeah. Also, uh, the dedication of the town report. Patty's been beating the drum on that one. So we'll yep. talk more about that. Yep. Um, and just to remind everybody is that is we're going to be starting our budget reviews next month. So is we're going to do it the same as before, have our regular meeting, and then yep. have the budget meeting. We're going to try to keep things a little bit low. Yeah. Um, so starting on February 9th, the 16th, and the 23rd is we will be reviewing the budgets. So is uh, looking for a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Thanks a lot. Yep. Thanks a lot. Good night. 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 Good night.